What's up guys? <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back. I've got Liam with me today and uh, we are in Fort William. We're going to be hiking and camping the Tranto Round. The Tranto Round is a 38 mile route that's normally run by ultra runners in under 24 hours. The fastest non-time is about nine hours, but Liam and myself are not ultra runners. We're not even runners. So we will be hiking and uh, wild camping the route. Our route is a little bit different from the normal Tranto Round route. We've planned about 80 kilometers or 50 miles loop from Fort William but we will be tackling 19 Munros over the course of the next four to five days. There will be about five and a half thousand meters of climbing and descending as well. So it should be a fun trip and a nice hike. We'll be hiking anti-clockwise and uh, finishing up on Ben Nevis on the final day. Just figured that it would make today easier when we've got half a day to find somewhere to camp. And uh, it also means that we get to end the trip on a high. My backpack is stuffed to the brim with four and a half days of food. There's no resupply points and no shops along the route, so we've got to carry everything with us. It's Saturday the 4th of September and uh, it's 2 p.m. We've already walked for about three kilometers away from Fort William into the route. And the plan for today is to uh, climb up to about 900 meters onto the ridge and hopefully find a camping spot before sunset. We're now 10 kilometers in and we finally turned off the fire road, which we've been following since the start, since Fort William. And we're now heading up towards the ridge. We've climbed 250 meters now, so we are now 425 meters above sea level. It's a hot and humid day. So much sweat pouring down my face. I am knackered. We've been climbing for a couple of hours now. I am quite tired. Uh, I've put more layers on because it's steadily getting colder with the uh, increasing elevation and the uh, wind chill and the fact that the sun is uh, behind the clouds now. We are near the top of the first Monroe now, so it should get easier from here on out. One down, 19 to go. <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> we walked for 40 and a half kilometers and climbed 1,100 meters. We pretty much did a half day, so I think that's pretty decent progress. And that puts us in a really good position to finish the Trent around in maybe day four, but definitely we're on track to finish it in day five. This is uh, four and a half days worth of food. Got instant noodles, instant pasta, tortilla wraps, breakfast bars, stroopwafel, chorizo, and more. Some hot food when it's cold outside feels so good. It's not 7 p.m. yet and it's getting a little bit cold already, so I think we're in for a chilly night. Good morning, it's 10 past 7 and we have packed up and we are ready to go. Last night wasn't as cold as I thought it was going to be. Inside the tent is actually quite cozy. I think what it was is when we were cooking, the wind chill made it feel really cold. So once we got inside the tent and we were shielded away from the wind, it was actually quite nice and quite pleasant. Slept all the way through to about 5.30 this morning when helicopters woke me up overhead. And then we started packing at half six. So it took us 45 minutes to uh, basically uh, pack away and eat. And now we are on our way and I'm really hoping that the, uh, the sun comes out soon because it's still pretty cold up here. We're aiming to do at least 20 kilometers today, 25 if possible. And on our route, we are going to uh, climb the rest of the Mamor Monroes. So there are nine left and we're basically just going to be following this ridge line all the way and possibly descend down into, uh, into the uh, rivers of Nevis. I am running a little bit low on water. We carried two liters up here 
and uh, since we got onto the ridge we couldn't find any sources of water and uh, after cooking last night I've only got about 300 milliliters left. I drank some this morning so I'm down to like the last dribble or two. On the map I can see that there's a lock -in coming up here about three and a half kilometers or so so that's maybe just an hour away so I think I'll be able to hold off on my thirst until then. Number two. We have reached the Lokan. It's taken us about just over two hours to reach here. Uh, we walked five kilometers, but uh, it's a good source of water, uh, which is much needed. From looking at the map, the next source of water is about 10 to 12 kilometers away, which we won't reach until the end of the day. We filtered two liters of water each to carry and drank some more and uh, that's the water that's going to last us for the rest of the day I think. Oh baby a triple! That's Munro number three out of 19. We now need to retrace our steps back down and uh, tackle the fourth Munro. Quad kill. It's 12.20, so we've been on the move for five hours now and we are on the summit of the fifth Munro or fourth Munro of the day. We walked for just under nine kilometers and we've climbed a thousand meters and we're both quite tired. We're walking slower than the speed that we thought we'd be able to walk at, but at the same time we underestimated just how much elevation we have to climb today. We thought there might be just over a thousand meters to climb for the entire day today and uh, we've already climbed a thousand meters. Number six. Seven. <laughs> Gosh, so liar. tired. This is the top of the seventh Munro, as Liam said. But now we have to uh, go backwards and retrace our steps. Number eight. Whoa. <laughs> Monroe nine, feeling fine. <laughs> I am absolutely fine. shattered. Everything in my lower half of the body hurts. My legs are hurting, my ankles are hurting. We're 16 kilometers in and it's probably about another two and a half kilometers until the first place that we can camp. So we still got a little bit to go, but right now I'm tired, cold and hungry. We just 
descending down the summit of the ninth Munro, down these rocks. Because it's been raining quite a bit, the rocks are wet, slippery, and I'm not a fan of it because it feels a little bit dangerous. We finally pitched up for the night. We stopped just short of the lock end underneath the 10th Monroe. So we walked 17.5 uh, kilometers and climbed 1,900 meters. The rain is getting heavier outside and it's such a relief being able to sit inside the tent, just put my feet up, relax, and know that I'll be able to stay dry for the rest of the night. We were aiming to do 20 to 25 kilometers today and we're a little bit short of that. It took us about 12 and a half hours to walk that and uh, to be honest, I am shattered and I've been pretty tired since about one o'clock today. My feet ache, my ankles ache and yeah, I'm just relieved that today is over. I'm just so happy to be camped up and I'm so relieved that we were able to find a place to pitch our tents by the Lockan. I think our mistake today was underestimating how difficult the day was going to be. We went into it a bit naively thinking it wasn't going to be that difficult and it turned out to be a really tough day uh, for the both of us, uh, not least helped uh, by the weather. Um, some hot food sounds really good right now, so if this rain stops any time in the next hour, an hour and a half or so, uh, I might head out, collect some water and cook up some dinner. This is my dinner options because I don't think the rain's going to stop anytime soon tonight. Good morning, it's uh, 6.30. I uh, slept for nine and a half hours last night. So really long and solid sleep, I think I needed it. It was really calm last night. Uh, I think where we pitched uh, is pretty sheltered um, in uh, three, uh, three directions. Um, and as such, we didn't really get much wind and there was a bit of condensation build up in my tent last night, but nothing I couldn't deal with. I just wiped away and um, ringed my towel outside but anyway I woke up this morning and uh, my thighs are still quite achy a little bit worried because uh, I think we still have quite a lot of climbing and descending to do today we are on our way to climb Ben Big the 10th Munro and we decided to leave our backpacks and our tents set up still and we're gonna be climbing it baggage free Baby. Over there is where our tents are. It's time to walk back and pack up. We're leaving the campsite now and it's uh, just about nine o'clock. Today's target is that we are going to try and camp uh, on the ridge just after Stobburn. So that's the 12th Munro. We're aiming to climb three Monroes today, having done the first one this morning already. Uh, we'll be doing another one before climbing up to Stoban, and uh, we're hoping to camp somewhere just after the summit along the ridge. We spotted a small body of water near the summit, so uh, hopefully that will be campable. The water situation today looks a lot better. Uh, we'll be crossing over quite a few uh, water sources. So I guess we don't have to uh, worry about carrying too much water today. So hopefully that will make our day easier. After looking at the map yesterday, I think we're going to cut off the detour to Loch Trigg and just follow the uh, normal Trenter round route. We don't think it makes much sense to do a seven kilometer detour when we are a little bit behind uh, schedule already and tomorrow looks like another tough day.
Right, after, after that descent down the mountain, our feet are so wet from the uh, dew in the grass anyway. It doesn't really matter, I can't get any wetter, so I just decided to wade across. It's one o'clock, we walked for nine and a half kilometers. I'm pretty knackered and uh, really hungry actually. So I think we're gonna stop here for a bit of lunch. We stopped 30 minutes for lunch. We couldn't sit down because the midge was pretty unbearable. I've got five bites on this hand and three on my other. We're now just following the river along. It's a nice change of pace. We're able to uh, move through quite quickly. It's a very flat, easy walking, unlike the uh, up and downs and the rocky mountain path and the uh, long grass descents that we've been dealing with over the past two days. We're just going to cut left to head towards Stow Barn now. If we kept to our original plans, we would have carried on following the water to uh, get to Loch Trigg. We followed this fairly boring Land Rover track for the past five kilometers. And now we're about to turn to climb Stob Ban. It's about three, three and a half kilometers with 500 meters of elevation gain. We're now at about 750 meters, so 200 meters to go. And we've got this wind and the uh, rain is hitting my face and it's absolutely miserable. Well, pal. We're pitched up now at, I guess, a lock-in just off the side of Stob Ban. The last hour of walking has been really, really tough. It's really windy and it started to get quite heavy with the rain and it just stopped being enjoyable. When you're 970 meters up with the rain and the wind hitting your face, you feel really cold and uh, I was starting to uh, kind of ache and start to feel a little bit numb at times. Um, so I'm quite glad to be sitting inside my tent right now. Because the weather was so bad, we wanted to pitch in a hurry. Uh, we couldn't find a campsite that was flat, that was big enough to pitch two tents that wasn't rocky so we can actually put our stakes in and that was sheltered from the wind. Uh, but we did manage to find, I guess, like this little pitch, uh, but it's not sheltered at all. So it's going to be quite a windy night for the both of us. Uh, overall today, I think we walked uh, about 20.5 kilometers and we climbed 1,500 meters. So uh, a little bit longer than yesterday, uh, but a bit, a little bit less elevation than yesterday as well. Quite pleased with the progress, especially with the uh, on and off drizzle that we had all day. But obviously I wish the weather was better today. Uh, I was really hoping that, you know, at least it wouldn't rain. And uh, to be honest, I feel like at this point we deserve some uh, better weather, some clear skies and some sunshine. Here's to hoping that there'll be no more rain and a little bit less wind tomorrow. Good morning. As you can hear, it's still quite windy and uh, unfortunately, it sounds like it's still raining today. I feel pretty rested. I fell asleep quite early last night, um, I think just after 8 p.m. And then I didn't wake up until just before six this morning. So that's a solid nine and a half hours of sleep. Uh, I woke up a few times because of the uh, wind and the fact that I pitched up in a hurry. I was on a slope, so I wasn't sleeping flat. Uh, but all things considered, a uh, nice night's sleep, um, but my legs are still definitely achy. Today's plan is that we're going to walk 17 and a half kilometers ish uh, to just past the other side of Benevis. The last train out of Fort William is at 5.30 at night, I believe. And so I think uh, walking all the way back to Fort William for the end of day today is a bit too long. Uh, we're looking about 27 kilometers back to the train station. Um, and given it's six o'clock now, 
we'd have to walk that in the next 11 hours or so and I think uh, that's going to be pretty difficult. We're leaving the campsite now to start the day. It's 7.15am and it's absolutely grim. Full rain gear on. In the background, we can just see the uh, grey outlines of an ominous mountain. Fifteen. Four more to go. Just when we thought the weather was starting to get better and the uh, sky was brightening up, it started full on raining again. It's just miserable. We just climbed through this gully behind me and it was pretty terrifying. Uh, towards the end, it got really steep and uh, because it's wet, there wasn't much traction and uh, you could fall a good few hundred meters if you slip. Sixteen. Three big ones left. Seventeen. Woohoo! <laughs> Two more to go. It's four thirty. Time for the final part of the day. It's a climb up to Camordeg and then another climb up to Benares. About five hundred meters in total and we're pretty much ready for it. Had a wee break and uh, filled up our water bottles. If we weren't here so early, I'd be pretty tempted to camp here and then tackle Carmel Dig and uh, Benevis tomorrow. Eighteen. <laughs> One to go, and that's Ben Nevis in the background. We finished walking along CMD Arit and now we are going to just climb straight up to the summit of Benevis. out of 19. So that's all the Monroes in the Trantoran done. So now we've got to head down and find somewhere to camp. We're 
we're still descending down towards the Lochan and I've got my head torch out because it's now 20 minutes after sunset and it's getting a little bit dark. It's now 10 o'clock and I'm finally sat in my tent. I think yesterday I used the term, I feel shattered. Um, I think today, if I felt shattered yesterday, I feel physically broken. Today was definitely much, much tougher than yesterday. We walked 21.5 kilometers and climbed 2,150 meters. Um, so it ended up being a huge, huge day. We walked the final hour, hour and a half um, down from Benevis in the complete darkness, uh, which didn't help. Uh, at the end, I think we were just trying to find um, somewhere to camp and just trying to get down. But the, uh, the kind of the rocky, uh, pebbly surface uh, was really tough on our trail runners and our sore feet. We actually didn't camp at the Lochan. Uh, we camped about 600 meters uh, before the path gets to the Lochan. In fact, we're just a few meters away from the mountain path. But we figured that we're pitching up so late, it's completely dark outside and we're gonna be away fairly early that it shouldn't really bother anyone. And uh, we were just completely exhausted towards the end of the day. So even though it's another 600 meters-ish, um, that's 600 meters saved. I think today's been a good day overall, um, but it is a shame that for some of the more remote Munros and the uh, ridges, we were just in the clouds and we couldn't see anything. Um, one summit felt very similar to the next summit, um, but the weather did get drastically better towards the end of the day. Uh, really pleased that we managed to get some good views from Carmor Dig as well as Ben Nevis. So obviously that lifted our moods not just being able to see stuff but able to uh, put away the rain jacket and be able to take rest breaks when we wanted uh, was a um, I guess a nice luxury to have. My feet are pretty tired from today's hike, uh, my ankles especially um, towards the uh, end of the day when we're climbing up Ben Evis, uh, were probably on the verge of giving up and uh, descending down Ben Evis, uh, didn't help either but Tomorrow's hike shouldn't be difficult at all. Uh, we're looking at maybe two or three hours uh, just down the mountain path and then back to Fort William. So um, I'm actually quite excited to have a uh, to have an easy day and a simple day uh, for once and uh, to get back to civilization. We've set off. It's uh, 6:45 a.m. on the final day of our world camping adventure on the Trent around. I didn't sleep too well last night. My air mat was on a slope and I kept sliding towards the uh, bottom of the tent and it didn't help that my uh, body just ached the uh, entire evening. So I don't feel refreshed, but today's fairly easy. We've only got about eight kilometers left to do and pretty much all of it is descending. So cautiously optimistic, two and a half, three hours for us to get back to Fort William. Right, we fully descended off Ben Evis and uh, we got to the youth hostel, which is just behind us now. It took us about an hour and 15 to uh, fully descend off Ben Evis. The youth hostel is the official start and end point of the Trent around. So I'm going to end the vlog here. Uh, unfortunately for us, this is not quite the end. We've got another four and a half kilometer walk back to Fort William train station, uh, but we're pretty confident in being able to do that in the next hour or so. Completed the Trent around in three full days, uh, one half day and I guess one quarter day, which is today. It's pushed me to my physical limits. I think on every full day, I could not have comfortably walked any faster or walked any further. So I feel like I've been challenged by the route and I can't really fathom how people run it in 24 hours or even faster. Obviously we were let down a bit by the weather. I looked at the weather forecast before we left and I anticipated one day of rain, uh, not two and a half days of rain. Um, and as such, I think I prepared my food badly. I uh, pretty much packed food uh, like I was going to cook every night. But in the end, I've got about, maybe about a kilogram of food that I've not eaten. So I just ended up carrying as dead weight. 
think a part of it is uh, not wanting to cook when it's wet and windy. I think the other part of it is when you're really exhausted at the end of the day, it's very hard to force yourself to eat enough calories and to basically eat food for its calorie content rather than its flavor. On this trip, I've not really used any new pieces of gear other than my 3F uh, ultralight trekking poles, which are 120 grams each. At the end of the day, you really feel the difference between these, which are only 120 grams, and a standard set, which probably comes in at about 240 grams. 19 Monroes in three and two half days-ish. How do you feel? Yeah, good. It was good. Uh, a bit disappointing with the weather, but otherwise, yeah, good trip. What's your highlight of the trip? Uh, so, climbing up CMD and then the um, knife edge walk over to Ben Nevis. Uh, it was sunny, we could see for more than 100 meters, and it was like just the right amount of danger. But it's still exciting, but there wasn't the fear of death. Nothing like a bit of adrenaline that stops your legs from yeah. aching so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that section was pretty fun. But anyway, that's pretty much the end of our trip. Thank you all for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>